This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective style can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. I should remind you that once again I'm focusing on addressing an audience from Western cultures. That's important because they place an especially high value on efficiency. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, especially the one on audience, do it. All right, this tutorial focuses on one area of style in professional writing. I'm talking about parallelism. I'm sure some teacher talked to you about parallelism before. In fact, you may be rolling your eyes right now. But my goal is to get you thinking about its impact on efficiency within a professional context and to explain specific techniques for achieving parallelism in your own writing. We'll be considering the style of a report titled Building a Resilient Energy Gulf Coast. This 2010 report was written collaboratively. I've revised the original to create two versions for instructional purposes. Remember the quality in these videos makes it impossible for you to read the text online. If you're a student using our book, your instructor should have a copy, or you can always download one at prosewrite.com. Now, the primary audience for this report is a very diverse group of policymakers, but there are also other people, including private citizens, that might be considered a secondary audience. The vast majority of readers are non-experts and skeptical of or sensitive to the writer's claims. That means the writer has to increase the reader's readiness to accept the report's content. My task in this tutorial is to explain how to avoid the six causes of faulty parallelism. I also hope to persuade you that avoiding style problems is important in that 2010 report. The first cause of faulty parallelism is using mixed verb tenses. Look at the passage from the 2010 report shown here. There are four items listed in a series after the colon. The first begins with the present tense verb, increase, the second with the past tense verb, decreased, the third with present tense, encourage, fourth with present tense, transfer. The writer can revise to create parallel structure very easily by simply removing the D from decrease to make it the same tense as the verbs in the other three items. Note that with faulty parallelism for this series of four actions, readers have to mentally attend to two different structures as well as four different items of information. But using parallel structure means readers must cognitively process their structure only once and can spend their mental energy only on processing the content. That means parallel structure enhances reading efficiency. The second cause of faulty parallelism is using mixed verb voices. In this version of the passage from the previous slide, the first three items in the series use verbs in active voice, while the fourth item uses passive voice. Remember, that means there's a form of the verb be followed by a verb with ed or en on the end. So here we have is transferred. In the revised passage, Parallel structure is created by making the structure of the fourth item in the series active instead of passive. The change has little or no effect on the reader's ability to actually understand the message. Rather, the change makes the message more efficient. I cannot imagine a reader who would prefer to spend more rather than less time processing the information in the report. 
The third cause of faulty parallelism is using mixed types of verbals. There are three types of verbals, infinitives, gerunds, and participles. Consider the sentence from the report shown here. What we have is an infinitive to quantify climate risks, which is coordinated with a gerund informing economically sensible approaches. Now consider the revised passage. What the writer did was create parallel structure by making the gerund informing into the infinitive to inform. The writer could just as easily fix the faulty parallelism in this example by making both verb forms into gerunds. That's what's shown in this alternate revision. The point is that their structure is now parallel. The writer conveyed the same content in all three versions I've shown you, but the revised versions are both more efficient at describing the goal of the report. And the revised versions also convey a more polished style or attitude or tone because parallel structure influences readers impression of the writer as careful orderly or even tidy now the fourth cause of faulty parallelism is mixing a verbal with a nominal here's the original passage from the report the phrase that begins enactment of new policies is a nominal it's coordinated with a phrase beginning with acting by individual homeowners, which is a verbal in the form of a gerund, like we talked about on the previous slide. The faulty parallelism is fixed in the revised version by changing the gerund into a nominal. Now the two pieces of information have parallel structures. Parallelism won't help the writer inform the audience, but it will make it more efficient for the audience to get the message. All right, the fifth cause of faulty parallelism is mixing types of noun clauses. Now there are two types, WH clauses and THAT clauses. In this example from the report, we see a WH clause beginning in the original sentence shown here, what the source. It's coordinated with a THAT clause that begins that regardless of climate change. The revised version achieves parallel structure by changing the WH clause into a THAT clause. Sometimes faulty parallelism is created when writers are uncomfortable with repeating the same word or structure. Someone somewhere along the way may have told you it was important to vary your sentence structure. While this might be effective when writing an essay, it's certainly not effective when writing in the workplace. Professional writing requires repetition. The repeated use of the that clauses in the revised sentence shown here achieves more efficiency. It's preferable because it requires less cognitive processing time than the original version. All right, the sixth and final cause of faulty parallelism is mixing full sentences with incomplete ones. In other words, phrases or clauses. Consider the report passage shown here. Notice that the first and second items in the bulleted list are phrases beginning with the extent and the size, while the third item is a complete sentence. When will those impacts be realized? In the revised version, the writer has converted the third item into a phrase parallel in structure to the first two. It now begins with the timing. The writer could have also revised the first two items into complete sentences to achieve parallel structure. Now it's time to check your understanding of parallelism by revising a sentence you haven't seen before. This specific question asks that you revise to eliminate faulty parallelism. What you see here is a passage from a resume. Before you revise it, what you need to do is identify what series of items in the writer's message should be parallel. Well, in this case, because we've got a bullet list, it's easy to identify that we've got four items here that should be presented in a parallel way. So how can all these items be revised so they have the same structure? There are many possibilities here, but the first item begins with a past tense verb. So you could revise so that the other three items also begin with past tense verbs. Here's another possibility. The second and fourth items are noun phrases, so you could revise to make the first and third items into noun phrases. But beginning each item with a verb focuses more on action, and that focus would probably be effective in a resume. So I've used past tense active verbs to begin each item in the series of bullets in the revised version. 
To help you understand how to avoid the six causes of faulty parallelism, I referred to a report about the economic consequences of climate change sent to policymakers on the Gulf Coast. Those readers are more likely to be ready to accept the report's claims if the writers state them using parallel structure for items that are coordinated or in a series. Parallelism increases the efficiency with which readers get a message because they cognitively process the structure only once. That reduces the time required to process ideas while reading, which means readers can attend solely to the content. This aspect of style also enhances the effectiveness of the message by creating a more orderly and polished impression. Now before I end this tutorial, I should state clearly that while the change from faulty parallelism to parallel structure seems small when considering a single example, it is significant when you consider its impact within an entire document, especially one written for an audience with low readiness to accept the document's message. In that situation, the successful professional does whatever he or she can to make it more efficient. It also demonstrates his or her ability to be careful. Remember, there's a difference between what readers can do and what they will do.